We live in a world where leopards leave paw prints in human spots, and humans are spotted in leopard prints. The irony lies in the fact that humans call it a luxury, and leopards call it survival. Hello, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Science Jam, brought to you exclusively by the Science Paradox. This time, we have to use someone who has delved deep into the realm of wildlife biology and conservation in India. He is a graduate in zoology and has a keen interest. in studying the behavior of wild animals outside their protected niches and their interactions with humans he has worked on several wildlife research and conservation projects including one funded by a grant from the department of biotechnology india where he studied the diet habits of leopards living in agricultural landscapes currently he is working on a project uh, which involves the collection of data on mammals for a project run by an ngo called wildlife images and reflections in association with the forest department of maharashtra india we are pleased to introduce a talented researcher a conservation enthusiast and an amazing senior rishikesh wang thank you rishikesh for joining us the first question that pops up in my mind whenever i come across young and driven researchers like you is how did you start your journey in this field of wildlife research uh, could you elaborate on the project that you did regarding the leopards found in agricultural landscapes so it happened to be that i was born in the landscape of junnar uh, which is a leopard village and we have a lot of leopards in our backyards uh, many times wow. we had the problem of uh, leopards lifting the cattle and that was something fascinated me a lot about the that particular wild animals because there was a lot of discussions in our villages uh, around our like locality that where are these leopards living like why do they lifting our cattle so mm-hmm. in search of that i i just explored more about leopards i read about them and later on in my bachelor's i started to work actually work on them so in in a following step or in just in search of that answer uh, question i would say so i started working on a project uh, that was uh, in agricultural landscapes of nashik so this particular project was funded by department of biotechnology india and my project focused on specifically the diet habits of leopards in agricultural landscapes like what leopards eat in agricultural landscapes how do they interact with people in agricultural landscape and that lep- uh, that leopard project gave me such an insights about leopard that it is very surprising to see leopard living in very close proximity with humans with a very less conflict and that is what fascinated about leopard a lot to me so well that's that's that really interesting because for someone to have um, well in your case it was an innate interest because you were born in that area where you you know it instilled a curiosity in you and it's actually really inspiring because you know there must have been other people other boys your age other girls your age in your school around you but then the fact that you decided to work towards it i mean if someone decides to work on a problem which is you know uh, around their locality or in their area observing all those problems and actually having an innate uh, curiosity towards it it's amazing but then uh, you know so again i i like uh, wild animals i like uh, nature but say if i were a layman and if i wanted to you know distinguish between big cats small cats cats of all kinds so again we know that uh, leopards belong to the genus panthera and for them to for you to recognize them there are certain obviously you know morphological features they have their other physical features and um, there are obviously a taxonomical hierarchy in which you can distinguish one so can you explain us uh, how a random person a layman would uh, learn to do this learn to classify them uh, okay so uh, first of all uh, leopard is one of the five extinct species in the genus of panthera so mm-hmm. you know there are uh, different species of panther like five panthera tigris that is tiger panthera leo that is lion mm-hmm. so uh, this panthera pardus leopard mm-hmm. falls uh, in the member of felidae that is cat family Yeah, and okay. initially uh, in the in late or early 90s there were a lot of classification of leopards 
So hmm. according to Linnaeus, there were about 27 subspecies of leopards found by him. But wow. uh, okay. to go in more scientific detail, only nine of them were classified as individual proper subspecies. Okay. So how to identify them for in a layman's perspective, I would say. Hmm. So these animals uh, were classified on the basis of locality and their phenotypical traits. Uh, so for example, the African leopard. So African leopard is a subspecies of leopard that is only found in African continent. Uh, right. Second is Arabian leopard that is in and around Arabia. And the phenotypic uh, or genotypically when scientists study them, they go much into details like their fur coat. The African leopard is having a tawny or more of a uh, dark, dark fur coat or color okay. of the coat. Mm -hmm. And the Arabian leopard Arabian leopard is the smallest subspecies of leopard. Okay. It is a tiny leopard, we can say. Not mm. very tiny, but amongst the all nine leopards, this mm. is the smallest leopard. And okay. its fur coat is about like deep golden color. And wow. to give another example is a moor leopard. Everyone might mm. know, like they mm. have yeah. about Siberian oh. tigers. There are yes. even uh, leopards living in snow. So these yeah. particular leopards have adapted so well that their fur coats are thick to protect them from the winters yeah. and snow yeah. and the cold. So these are how these animals adapted according to the different localities and the phenotypic traits become highlighted and for a layman we can identify on these simple basis of factors we can say. Okay. And I'll add add more like uh, even there are many questions by people that uh, we if we see a leopard how we identify a leopard individually so mm. as we have yeah. our diff fingerprints so every person's fingerprint is different so does leopard's spots are leopard's yeah. spots are called rosettes so every leopard is having a different uh, rosette pattern and on that mm. basis we can identify every individual leopard mm. right wow. I think that's where the saying comes from. Uh, leopards cannot change their spots. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's exciting, right? Like the way we have our own exactly. fingerprints. Fingerprint. Leopards yeah. have their own spots. Like it's individual. Spots. It's individually different. It's yeah. very interesting. But again, coming back to the project that you've worked on. Um, so you mentioned that you <clears throat> worked on the dietary um, uh, aspect of the leopard and obviously the leopard human relationship and how they how do they survive or how do they um, uh, coexist so um, my next question would be uh, what is the reason for the leopards being so adaptable in terms of their prey first of all and second of all uh, how do they meet their metabolic needs if they consume more of a smaller domestic prey okay. uh, so uh... You know, from very beginning, uh, when there was a lot of deforestation or when the agricultural land was uh, increased in, in replacement of forest, the leopards are the species which are very adaptable because these are very compact in size and their, uh, what we can say, their diet or appetite is somewhat not big as tiger. So he can adapt in varied right. ranges of landscape and mm -hmm. as you said that how can he uh, live on the domestic diet mm -hmm. so you know yeah. leopards living in very close proximity with humans it is not the case that they have started now uh, in early british records they were mm -hmm. also they also mentioned that leopards are living in very close proximity with people so uh, the factors that are responsible for uh, this cause for the their adaptability is Leopard has uh, have easy food in or around the human settlements. So there is no effort to make a hunt. So mm. just imagine that you are living in some town and there are plenty of stray dogs mm. and you just have to walk in and just take down a dog and right. he can feed you for two to three days. So there's no effort. Yeah. It's like yeah. what from for them. <laughs> the easy food right. for them. Right. So yeah. one of the main reason is easy food and uh, usually in 
or around human settlements uh, or in agricultural landscapes, uh, there is no competition for leopards. There is no hmm. apex predator for him. So many hmm. areas, okay. there is no presence of tigers. So leopards, leopard is only apex predator. So he can survive there well without any competition for food and for meat. So that hmm. these two reasons I think are very important for leopards survival in and around human settlements. And another is like their food, the availability of food makes them uh, come or uh, attracts near the human settlements. Hmm. Right. That's very and interesting. These, and this hmm. have been continued for generations. And that is how these animals tried or these animals are so well in living living in the human settlements so they don't face any problem they are very used to it so they have adopted yeah, basically leopards are a rarity yeah. there yeah yeah and even like farmers who uh, have their own fields where leopards are usually found they are also quite used to finding leopards around and they don't think of it as a very big hmm. deal hmm. unless of course it starts attacking the livestock but otherwise it's a very useful thing i think for them and I'll add a bit, uh, I'll add a small point. Uh, so, you know, leopards, the leopard is having a very small gestation period, about three to four months, unlike our house cat. Hmm. So when, oh. when leopards breed uh, in such landscapes, uh, the success rate of their litter getting raised is maximum. And that is what mm-hmm. booms the population of oh. leopards oh. in landscapes okay. where, is, where there is no competition. That's, that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. That's completely opposite to tigers, actually. Yeah. 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 So basically, their survival rate is quite nice. I mean, it's uh, mm. one of the main reasons why, it's, why there isn't uh, a highly advertised uh, Project Leopard, I guess. Project Leopard. <laughs> yeah. 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 And even like while my studies, I found that uh, leopards have a diverse diet from like a small mouse to a mm. dog mm. in mm. human landscapes. Mm. Like from, they have such a diverse diet that can surprise you. Even I saw that uh, leopards do eat some bird species. Wow. Like the wow. hens which are around their houses mm. and the people mm. living mm. in villages. Mm-hmm. So it consists of many different varieties of that it all consists of domestic as well as wild uh, and that is what my though. study found out how did yes. you find out that the leopards eat this uh, particular thing how did you find out what to do yeah okay uh, so uh, the method which i <laughs> used was scat analysis mm-hmm. when leopard poops uh, there uh, so i'll just start from the basic technique and how i did started mm-hmm. So, um, le- when leopards poop, uh, the, uh, the scat or the poop is having a lot of hair samples, which le- when leopard hunts his prey, he, he just licks the, yeah, yeah, he licks the animal and that, that, is, that what we can say, that hair samples uh, are ingested while eating also, while eating the meat. Yeah. And that appears in its poop. So what I did, I collected its poop. I, uh, I separated some hair samples. And as we know uh, that hair, hair samples, unlike every individual species, like, like of dog, the hair sample is different. Of uh, rabbit, the hair sample is different. So every individual animal is having different hair samples. And how I did identify that was, uh, our hair is having a protein material for keratin. Mm-hmm. Keratin. So also in hair we have uh, like cortex and medulla. That is uh, right. the inner part and the outer <clears throat> part. So every animal is having different cortex and medulla patterns. And on that basis, I uh, did uh, microscopy for that. And mm-hmm. from that I learned that every individual animal what he ate, and I recorded it. And after that I got to know. So we'll come to our next question. So as you spoke about the scat analysis, which is the feces analysis. 
so in mm -hmm. identifying the prey of the leopard can you also identify if the prey has some form of microplastic or if the prey had previously ingested some form of plastic because we know how biomagnification works and so when these cattle or these prey have microplastics or plastics in their systems so from a conservation perspective how does that affect the food chain and how does that affect the leopard uh, did you do any research or did you read about anything like that uh, so there's a very basic concept like when leopard hunts the prey it removes its gut so what whatever its prey species is eating that okay. is not eaten up by leopard so it throws yeah. away its gut and the meat portion is only eaten by the leopard so the plastics mm -hmm. in particular is not affecting the animals mm -hmm. like in particular oh. we are talking mm -hmm. about leopard okay interesting and is this the same for other feline cats or uh, this is just for leopards no even tiger throws the gut away because oh. gut is having all semi digested material right. that is right. also right. very stinky and that is not preferred by these cats while eating the meat mm -hmm. oh so they are choosy and smart <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the assumption which we have about feline feline cats is that they are really secretive for example mm. tigers are extremely secretive you won't generally spot tigers that easily and they live in really dense uh, jungle areas as opposed to that leopards have this behavior behavioral instinct of roaming about so freely in the open and recently some encounters have really intrigued us for example a leopard was found playing with villagers in the area of kullu and on another mm -hmm. instant a leopard just walked onto a highway and it just sat there out in the open like that so um, do you have any explanation for this kind of behavior of leopards how they are so um, unafraid or how they are so free to roam around in the open like that Uh, so yes so you know there are many factors uh, for this particular question so you know leopards are bold and shy at the same time it's all about individuality like there are different personalities of, of leopards like like of humans yeah. so we while uh, studying we have also found some leopards that are very shy and some of them are very bold so uh, i'm saying this because it depends on their individual personality some of the leopards are very bold and they don't hesitate to walk in front of people boldly and some at the same time some of them are very shy if they just uh, get to know that you are approaching them by like any means so they they'll just disappear they're like shadow of the forest it is also mentioned yeah. in yeah. jim corbett's yeah. book yeah. that leopards yeah. are called yeah. shadow of the forest. forest you don't even know that where they were and where they are now so they are very very yeah. shy we can say but there are some examples where they are living with close proximity with humans mm -hmm. and they have got used to it and in in response to that they are become, they are being cool about it i would say so it's more like an evolutionary adaptation for them that they have just coexisted with humans for so long so now they are unafraid yes okay say. i mean i think we can actually <clears throat> be sure not sure but at least kind of speculate that it can be or it is an evolutionary adap adaptation because even in the news article about the uh, leopard who was you know seen playing around with the villagers there also they have mentioned that that leopard was subadult right so yes a small i mean not small but i'm 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 sure that leopard must have just uh, you know juvenile uh, maybe yeah parted away yeah. with his mother or with her mother with his mother i don't know the gender unfortunately and um, so for someone for a small leopard who's just parted away from its mother it's a huge thing right just to go ahead and play with villagers it's interesting it's right. weird peculiar but yeah i mean this makes sense or it could have just been another adventurous uh, leopard cub 
Yeah, yeah like Rushike like said, the, some of them are bold. Some Personality. Yeah. 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 That's that's interesting. You know, that's so interesting. And there is also like when you study leopards, you also get to know that they are very keen in knowing things. They are very exploring. We can say. Hmm. Hmm. So many leopards, are, like through study, we found that they are very very keen to know new things hmm. in their surroundings. Mm -hmm. So they they visit that particular place, explore it, and that is what I have learned a bit from my past experiences.